Hello and welcome to Chocolate Bros episode lucky number seven. Today we have uh, myself, I'm Sam Riley, we have Zach Burrell. Howdy. And we have Angel Garcia. How you doing? And we have a special guest, we have Andy Carmona, recent winner of the Petit Cup. How you doing, Andy? Hi guys, hello, hello. All right, so we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, real quick, we're going to touch up on the upcoming events. Uh, we have the Kansas Petit Cup coming up here February 3rd, that's at the Collector's Cash in Kansas. Um... Myself, Zach, and Angel are planning on, on attending. Uh, we're going to see Richard again, who is a representative uh, for North America for uh, Square Enix, so that's exciting. Um, and then February 25th, which I believe is a Sunday, we have the Magnet Summer Series coming up, and that's in North Carolina. Um, I'm going. Uh, I know you're going, Zach, right? Are you trying to see if you go? To the North Carolina event? Yes. We'll see. Uh, it's going to matter on work time off and all that, but... Right. You know. Okay, I, I figure we can drive back that night, so it should be fine. You probably should. Uh, I mean, I'm a lock for Kansas City, though. We're already all set up for that. Right, all right. What about you, Angel? Yeah, I'm going for sure. Okay. Uh, Andy, what about any of your group? Are any of you guys heading to North Carolina? Uh, unfortunately not. For us, it was kind of like maybe last minute, even last minute to figure out if we were going to Tampa. But uh, seeing as, you know, we had a little bit more of a success at this tournament, uh, we might actually start planning for future ones. Yeah. So maybe no. starting March, we'll start getting more into it. Sweet, that sounds that sounds pretty good, and there are some events coming in March, I believe. Um, but up in April, there is a rumor, a confirmed rumor. I can't tell you sources, but there will be a regional first week of April up in Boston. So if you want to look at tickets for that, um, just trust me, you'll want to be in Boston the first week. For those of us that are here in North America, uh, you'll want to qualify. There'll be some um, for Canada as well, but I believe those might be in March, um, and then there will be two in August. At Gen Con again, that's like an unconfirmed confirmation. So you'll you'll definitely want to consider that. We already got our tickets for Gen Con, uh, Zach and I. I don't know, uh, Angel, are you putting in going? No, well, I haven't got anything yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, and then maybe we'll see Andy there. We'll see. Uh, I know there's another. Uh, there's a Petit Cup in March, I believe, also twenty fourth, fifth, that range in uh, Ohio. Um, and then there's also a new series starting in Ohio as well around the same time. Okay, the 24th we put it on a Saturday, and that does sound familiar. Um, and what is the new event? Is that the... It's the Crystal Cup, I think they're called. Oh, oh Crystal Cup, yeah, in Ohio, yeah. What, what date is that on? I, I believe it's around that same that same time as the Petit Cup. Okay, I wonder... Yeah, that is really awkward. Um, yeah, which is something that we should address, too, here locally, because we have a 1K... Um, over uh, at the Beer Collectibles, right? Yep, over in Orlando. Yep, and then we have another 1K the same day over in St. Petersburg, uh, which is, you know, first world problems. We have two yeah, 1Ks, right. but... Which major city do we want to drive to to play cards? Yeah, but, like, that's it's still frustrating, right, of course, because we have, like, we we already have, like, small a small number of events, and so we want to travel for them. We can't go to two the same day. Um but yeah, go to separate events and get first place at each one, right? <laughs> and that's that would be the that would be the dream. That would be the dream. Um, so let's just jump into the Petit Cup. Uh, Andy, how did the Petit Cup go for you? It was amazing. I mean, I went in expecting a lot more water, seeing as it's been pretty successful. So I was kind of just preparing for that. But other than that, I mean, it was just awesome. The fact that we got in there a little bit earlier, I was just like, man, that's. Uh, looking at maybe 20, 30 people, but man, 50 people, it's... You wanted more water? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, because I was, like, prepared for it. So I'm like, all right, if I can just, you know, go through that I was or something. <laughs> I came in expecting a lot more Dataluma, a lot more Ice Earth, uh, Earth Wind, that kind of stuff, because uh, that's I, what's been trending in other areas, but no, nah, yeah, it just ended up being a ton of water for me. I was very surprised. Yeah, and and so, I also expected a lot of, like, the, I, I figured the, the Lightning Wind deck would be very popular. I figured, um, there was a lot of different decks that I thought would be good, but yeah, actually, Dat Dat Luma seemed like it'd be nuts. Uh, something I realized, though, and I made this fatal mistake, is that, one, my deck was really weak to uh, Water Wind. Uh, extremely weak. That was where both of my losses were to Water Wind. Um, one of them to the eventual top eight and person that beat you, so maybe I could have done you a favor by beating him. Um, Alfred, but the thing is, is that I expected people to adapt to what I thought the best deck was. But I think in reality, in, in games like uh, Final Fantasy, like 
people aren't going to switch decks like to a great extreme, right? Because they already own certain cards. So, like, for example, like, I can switch to any deck because I own all the cards. You can switch to any deck because you own all the cards. But our average player base here in Tampa plays one to two decks. Is that right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they'll branch out to a third one, but it's never optimal. Like, they're missing a card or two, and they just don't want to invest into it, which is fair. Right, right. So people... Or about pe- pool, like... Yeah. Exactly. So... It, it, in Tampa, like uh, at least locally here, and I am assuming in, in Miami, as as Andy was saying, like water is a really good deck and does really well. So there, there's no reason for people to, to to get off of the deck, right? If if they already own the deck. So even though ice, maybe ice Earth has like a good matchup, or maybe like Dalum is just insane, but like they're not going to get off the deck that they've already been playing, right? Yeah, people uh, tend to stick with what they know in this game, at least so far, it seems. Yeah, local level, but like people like us who are trying to travel a lot more, maybe, yep. maybe we're just more adventurous if we need to be. But like the people who are just trying to win like their local stuff, local petite cups, whatever, it's definitely more economic. And I guess it makes sense. Like you play what you know, get really good with it. And I mean, that's what I did. I played yep. a deck that probably isn't top, you know, tier one, tier zero deck, but I still did really well with it just because I understand it. Yeah. So i I played um I played the fast and Fasoya deck. Uh, that I, I saw a Japanese list. I had tested a, a wind lightning deck to an undefeated record in playtesting. I tested a mono a mono water for Soya deck to an undefeated record. I tested water earth to an undefeated record. And then I tested lightning water, um, took a couple losses, and then still decided to play that one at Petite Cup against my better judgment. And I will quote Zach, who asked me, because I, because I was considered playing the deck that I had tested, like the good versions, what I thought of the Fasoya deck, or playing the Japanese list or the Six Age Gaming's list, the Fast and Fasoya list. And Zach said, well, do you trust your own testing or their testing more? And I said, well, of course I test my own testing, but then I still went to their list, and that was like such a huge mistake for me. Like, yeah, you tend to prefer lists that you grind out, those ones where you make two changes every night and turn it into like, you know, 20 different cards by the end of it. But it's still your baby over time that gets optimized and optimized. Right. And then in the end, I abandoned that and went with their list. And that is like, that will forever haunt me. I, I, I played to X and 2, but the two matches I, I lost, I feel like, are short up quite a bit uh, by playing the Earth cards. So the water and the wind, when they try to go wide, which is what happens, they play like Emperor uh, Cecil, uh, which I, I think is good, I guess fine. But like you just Shanto to them in the Earth the Earth version of the Vasoya deck. And then you untap and win the next turn. Right. So So Andy, what uh, what decisions did you go through to put yourself on the deck that you put yourself on for the tournament? It's kinda of funny because the some of the changes that I did were actually last minute because the initial deck that I was gonna go with had a monster package with it. You know, I was actually playing double Azul, uh, double Dragon and Triple Behemoth with uh, one of the um, the EX Burst backup. I forget his name. <laughs> oh, and he was actually taking the place of Seymour. So uh, I was testing that for quite a bit. I kind of liked it because I was getting a little bit more of uh, value out of Azul. Um, but uh, I don't know. I kept like big Chantoto. I was just like, well, I don't get anything out of this. And I keep looking at lists and I'm like, man, I see Chantoto. I keep seeing Chantoto. I got to figure out something to, like, you know, if that goes off, you know, what do I do? You do the Manderville dance, that's what you do. Exactly. So, man, I just kept, you know, I'll tell you right now, I mean, the, the, the Final Fantasy decks, I mean, that website is a godsend. I mean, to have everything, it's like, I'll be at work and, you know, I'll answer a work email, 20 minutes later, I'm, I'm on the deck list, and I'm just, I'm looking at all the lightning cards, I'm like, what can I play, what can I play? <laughs> so, it's exactly you know. where I find myself most days when I'm like waiting for a like chemical test to finish, and I just gotta wait. I'm sitting there on my computer making decks. I'm talking to Sam and Angel, and like a chat or whatever, and we're just discussing lists. So it's the it's the Reddit equivalent to Final Fantasy, right? Like the biggest work time waster. Like <laughs> the, the the first website that every every work should ban is FF decks for any Final Fantasy players. <laughs> So if that starts happening, I mean, if, if, if work starts spanning, I think I do apologize. I don't want it to put it on blast or anything, but... Uh. <laughs> so, hey, tell, tell us a little bit about Hildebrand. Um, I, I mean, let's talk about the card art, man. I mean, I love this guy. <laughs> yeah, it's sweet. <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, he just expresses everything that he needs, but um, it's it's everything. It's about, like, 
his wording that makes you look at it again and again and again because you kind of find the keyword here, the keyword there. Like, what? So, uh, how do I so, go miss way into it? So, I want to talk about it a little bit because we, we've had this conversation, Zach and I, I don't know, 20 times, right, Zach? That sounds about right. Uh, I don't know where you're going. Yeah, yeah we, 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 I think both of us, like, definitely me, uh, uh, change our thoughts on him quite a bit. Like, when I found out that the, the backup and issue was only two, I was like, well, that makes him a lot more playable. Um, but I still don't think, I feel like Hildebrand isn't that good if you play against people that know what he does. How often do you feel like people misplay against you with him? Yeah, going into like the, the, the Petit Cup and going through all my matches, I felt like that was the edge. The fact that people kept underestimating what this card did, how much value he's putting on board, and that was kind of like the edge. It's like, okay, cool, if I can keep this up, or, you know, people will kind of just use their natural outs to, to the X, but then realize, hey, wait, that wasn't quite the answer I was looking for, and now he kind of rallies over this. That was kind of the edge, I and mean, it's kind of... Yeah, I feel like if people just understood combat a little bit more, and they used combat to kill him, um, you know, that would be very different, or, or damage to kill him. I'm not saying that he's bad, I just, and I could see that he, he could carry someone through a tournament. It's just like, reading the card completely changes it, you know, for most people. Now, how often did you use his ass ability to good effect? Not as much. I, I didn't really quite, um, I, I did make some changes to where if I do decide to use it, only because, you know, I have another copy in my hand and I'm already building up quite a bit of temple, so I've got resources to kill. Um, then yeah, I mean, I would just pop it off and I want to say maybe three or four times about the whole tournament of the three times, um, I was able to get two forwards, one of them being Gilgamesh, which is really great. Oh yeah. Especially against all the, you know, the water decks that were going on. Um, uh, so I was going to ask you, I guess that answers that, but I was going to ask you, have you ever A, flipped Alcid into a free forward, uh, flipped a Dia to break something, but I guess that answer that's now. Actually, no, but the other one was uh, I was able to get an S out and Alcid, but I didn't have a target in hand. Oh, unfortunately. <laughs> I did make my opponent sweat. I just, like, you know, I flipped the Alcid, and I just looked at him, and I go, target? <laughs> Respond? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, one of the things that I like to do, and so this is something that I picked up because I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh!, was um, how to make your opponent telegraph what he can do, you know, by judging by what they're going to do. So that was kind of like another edge on, on, on the... Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Angel, how, how, how about you? Tell us what you thought about the Cup and how it went for you and what you played. I was expecting more Earth. That's why I went with my uh, Ice uh, Fire deck. But there was a lot of Water Wind. Right, so if you're playing Ice Earth, you can Shiva down their guys, Genesis down, lock up and discard, and they're a little bit slower. Yeah, it, and my deck does a lot of damage because it's Fire like Vivi, Legend. Okay. Um, I have Elias to Haze. Okay. It, yeah. So you want to see less Mint Woo than your average Ice oh, deck? Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And what was your what was your record? Uh, four two. Four, four two. wins, two losses. All right, that's sweet. Uh, what do you think about the deck overall? Would you play it again? Oh yeah, I like it a lot. Um, although I had some, of course, weaknesses. Yeah. Uh, like Mingwu, of course. Right. Um, an emperor for sure. An emperor. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In one game, I could not devour to get my genesis and get a the heat to. You know the damage you win, right? Um, so yeah, right. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I I really like that deck. Also, we've been testing um, the the fire wind deck, uh, which is the team ex's warrior of light flash fire. Is that correct, right? Yes. So, what were your thoughts on that deck? At uh, first, uh, I you know how, what to think about the deck. To be honest, because um, it's been. I mean, how long has it been since you've been you seen a fire wind combination? I I've never seen it besides Ian playing it at local. Yeah, yeah. Right, doing a like crazy brew with it, but yeah, never yeah. kind of turned into anything. Yeah, exactly. And then I look at it, and I was like, saw a few cards like again, Vivi Legend, and then you also played Vivarisha with the Black Walls or even Ranger, yeah. the three drop fire. So it's not playing Ranger. But the, the original list isn't, but we added that, right? Oh, no, yeah, we added okay. that, yeah. The, the we'll talk about the changes had, here in a minute, too. Oh, okay, so the the original has Scion. Yeah, it has Scion, uh, yeah, Scion, uh, yeah. And to give, you, to give your Scion and Sovereign Brave. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I was like, 
I don't know what's the meaning of the card in the deck. Okay, yeah. that's fair. Basically, some, some background information. Uh, how many people were at the event, uh, Zach? The one where this deck top? Yes. Um, I believe it was 48. All right, so 48 people, three of copies of this list top eight, two of them exactly the same, and one of them just like three cards different. Well, I mean, I've just been looking at the list, and I'm just like, how did this guy get over over Minwoo? I'm sorry, I just, I mean, that guy just haunts my mm-hmm. my my dreams. But um, the list looks pretty solid. I mean, first question off the bat, you know, where's Palom? <laughs> but it looks pretty solid. I mean, oh, Palom, that's interesting too. Yeah. yeah that- that top eight had, I think it says, 21 uh, water cards across the whole top eight. Okay, so I mean that that does explain Andy's question of how it got around the Minwoo, right? Uh, Looks like it's just a very water uh, lane area, you, which right. is strange. And you have two Barbarishas, I suppose, which help. Yeah. Bahamut probably is big enough to help. But yeah, Angel was playing the exact list during testing. He just could not get over my Minwoo. And it does play three Archer. Yeah, you have to have that Archer for the minimum matchups, otherwise that deck's severely crippled. Although yeah. your version, though, is a little weaker to Minwoo because you have, you're have you relying on that Ranger plan, whereas the initial just has Cyan, which I'm not sure is even better, but right, so, a different way to attack the uh, opposing matchups. So the, yeah, so my version that I, I came up with um, is called the Power Rangers because it plays three of the Green Ranger and three of the Red Ranger. And the idea behind the Red Ranger being that, like, you could play VV pre-combat, you can play Fury on pre-combat, you can play a lot of these cards pre-combat, and you can attack with the Ranger and finish their guy off. It is playing a third Barbarisha, which I think helps. And also, because it has haste, you get in earlier points of damage, so your Red Mage becomes better. Maybe Minwoo isn't necessarily a problem. But yeah, I definitely think that it is weak to Minwoo. Um, and then I changed the Warrior of Lights, although the deck is named after Warrior of Light. And we put in uh, Moogles and the Emperor, which has actually been really, really good. Uh, you put in uh, Dark Emperor, then you put in the copies of Four Drop Wind Moogle that draws card. Yep, uh, two of them. Uh, enter and Dying, okay. Yep, uh, and just because we wanted a like a card that you could attack into their, their bigger guy, feel good about trading because you're going to draw a card, and then you just play a Shar or a VV or a Fury on after combat, and you feel like you, you, you went positive in that trade. Or And then we also play two copies of Zidane, uh, so you could just take them in, I guess, is one oh, of the outs. Yeah, I, I like that change, too. I, I love that Heroes of Dane card. That yeah, it's absurd. criminally underplayed. Everyone's like, oh, the Light of so much better. It's like, it's really just choosing between giving your opponent a choice is so different. Right. It's so so when we played it at the, our local event, um, to compare it to a Magic card, Thoughtseize, uh, Chris Lancaster goes, hey, so that, that Ford that Thoughtseize is, that's absurd, right? I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good. You know. Exactly, he has the same thought process as I did initially, which is like, okay, this is thought sees on a body, because I come from magic as well. It, oh, it just sounds so absurd uh, that that would be yeah. for free CP. But, you know. and, and similar to what Andy was talking about with, with the Hildebrand, where the, your points are going to misplay, the number of times, like, if I make the biggest misplay in Final Fantasy, is that I, I always reverse the day's effect. So it's like, oh, you have four cards in your hand, or I can kill your Zidane really easily, you know? It's like... <laughs> No, it oh yeah, where you count wrong, or where you forget yeah. you lower. It doesn't or t- that Chris yeah. did that to you against you. Yeah, he did that. Uh, he just he was new. It was his first first few games, so he should have won that game. If he if he 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 you know mirror web's a good card uh, when you know your deck list, and he went and got realm in a deck that had Cognazzo, uh, Cloud of Darkness, and Lena in it. So I don't know. He went and got realm, but he's newer, so you know knowing the deck list would help. But speaking of water. Uh, Andy, tell us a little bit about the, the, the Mog version 6 turn 1 go strategy. So, I'm a big fan of that, even though that definitely wasn't my idea. Uh, it was my teammate Jonathan's idea. Um, he actually got top 8 in the teacup as well. It really forces an answer out, so it, it, it turns like it forces a little bit of uh, tension you know, on your opponent, because if not, you're, you're already, you know, you're up one card, you eventually it turns into a three-card advantage, and that's just by turn three. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy idea, it's a crazy concept, but it, it works. Right, so if, if you go turn one Mog, and then they Leviathan it, that's really good for you, right? They're down the same number of cards, but you get your card back. If they go turn one, uh, I don't know, like Yuna H it, that's really good for you too because they're down three cards, and you get the card back. So they have, especially on the play, um, they have just one way of punishing Jonathan's turn one mob, right? And that's Al Sid. And, uh... <laughs> Unless you overextend and have the Emperor in hand, which that, you know, I've done that one That's true. Oh, yeah, so you can just play turn one Emperor, too, as well, right? Hmm, that's interesting. 
So, in, so Jonathan is playing for top eight at the Petit Cup, okay? And he goes turn one mock. So I was Jonathan's opponent, and I couldn't have been happier. I played Al Cid. I killed his Mog. He's playing Water. I have two forwards on the board at turn on turn one. The game was over. The game was legit over. I proceeded to absolutely destroy him, and I'm going to crush his dreams out of top eight. Uh, but then I asked him. I said, "How often does that? Cause it just it just hit me. How often does your opponent not have turn one Al Cid? And if they don't, do you just win?" And he's like, "Yeah, you just always win them when they don't kill it on turn one." I was just, it just, I was like, holy crap, like, <laughs> that card is insane. Uh, I ended up conceding to him, because I, I was, if I won at X and 2, I would have been uh, probably like 12th or 11th place. Like, I, 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 there's no way I get in there. Uh, and with a win, he gets in, so I think the right thing to do for those that aren't coming from a TC background is you 100% of the time concede to your opponent if it's going to get them in. Like, it's just the right thing to do. I did bubble my wife into ninth place because of that, uh, and I knew that that I knew that that was going to happen. I was pretty sure because he was ninth going into the round and she was tenth going into the round, um, and so a win would put him in, and a loss would put her in probably. Um, but she understood, and I think that in the Final Fantasy community, it means a lot more for Jonathan to make that top eight. And he is Jonathan's a nice guy. I'm sure you know that Andy, uh, one of the nicest guys I've played with. Uh, so it was super cool to see him battle. Uh, unfortunately, he lost in his top eight match, um, and then Zach lost in his top eight match to our f- good friend Alfred, who is one of the finest Final Fantasy players I would say that I've, I, I've come across. I was very sad to see him lose his top four match. It was pretty close too. Well, I mean, the first game was extremely <laughs> close, and he lost that. That he took the second game very decidingly. Third game, it was very close for a long time. Yeah, he uh, he got run over by the opposing water deck. Yeah, so shout out to uh, him for doing that. Well, Alfred is uh, like a, a stand-up guy, super super fun to play against. Uh, one of the things about Alfred that you don't want to see is that he is so calm and collected when he's playing the game that like you just never know. Like you could you could just completely could right. You could just yeah. blow him out, and he's like, okay, my turn. Like yeah, <laughs> very so, calm. That was so, my round so, right there. <laughs> yeah, so, right. So I said the same thing. I was gonna do. I was gonna say, uh, I can never read him. Like, you cannot tell what he's thinking about or if he's going to counter what play you're trying to do and stuff like that. It's like, it's hard. Right. And so, and you played him round six, Andy? Just a nightmare because it's just, there's no reads. There's no reads off Alfred. So it's just like, wait, <laughs> okay, so no reaction to this. He's like, he, he's just frozen stiff. So I'm just, okay, maybe it's okay to overextend. And no, I just get punished big time. It's like, well, now you left yourself with kind of two cards in your hand. Let's drop the, uh, the hero Zidane. And he just... My right and play, and, like, well, okay. and so you you lost Alfred as well. I lost to him, um, and then one of the biggest things that that swung in his. Uh, I mean, you want to beat Mono Lightning, play heroes again. Mono Lightning does want to one for one you, like with cards like Idia and like things like that. You know, I never thought about that. That's a good point. They have to you two for one because you take the card out of their hand, and then they still have to find a way to kill it. Yeah, so that is definitely a good way to beat that deck. That's interesting. Um, the way that I, that I ran it. Um, you kind of always have more or less when you're when you're kind of like turn three to six. You're still kind of setting a back row unless you had a really good hand. Yep. And at that point, you have got a max of maybe three cards in your hand, and it's just you know once that hits, it's like that actually kind of can slow you down up to two turns uh, if you hit the right card. So yeah. All right. Before we head out, I think that there is uh, a lot of people are going to know what would you change about your deck moving forward. Kind of like the way it, it plays because um, I don't know. It's not really an established meta. I don't think you can do that in Final Fantasy. It's just kind of like what people see is happening, like that that's effective. So they want to play it, you know. Okay. Um, maybe just bump Exodus to three. I mean, that guy also was a great MVP to most of my plays. Um, yeah, I think Exodus is. Uh, it, it seems like a very symmetrical effect, but it never is, right? Never is because if you if you can to just kind of like offset the numbers just by one digit, you know, um, you kind of always have that advantage. Because a lot of times the decks that your opponents are playing, they're swarming the field with two costs, whether they have an army of three costs. Right. For those of you that don't know what Exodus does, it's the four mana uh, summon and lightning that uh, each each person chooses a number, starting with the person that casts it. Um, and then you break all the forwards. Um, and yeah, so it, that card is really, really good. 
randomly, I do I, I do want to say that another card that seems like it should be being played more right now is Zalera, another 4 uh, CP summon that breaks all the prime numbers. Um, it's a great way to kill a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, please don't try to kill the Hildebrand with it. <laughs> so Yeah, don't. I mean, it, it happened to me, and I was just like, okay, well, kind of. Like, the board, my board read basically Hildebrand and a couple of 4 costs. I believe it was... Uh, and Gilgamesh. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you kind of want to get the Hildebrand. That's going to go back to my hand. Right. Look at Devastation on my opponent. Just like, just wanted to concede right then and there. Yeah, I could definitely so, see that. So you would never go back to the... Well, not, I'm actually never, but uh, you don't think you're going to go back to the monster package anytime soon? You like where it is? Yeah, I mean, the, the monster package is, is... I think it's good, just not great, only because it, the monster lineup... It, they're, they're good, but... The way that I've seen people play the decks and everything, I mean, Emperor is a thing, and uh, kind of just like a one for one with uh, with the monsters. So I'm like, well, I in in this type of uh, of meta, I don't know. I want to try and get a two for one. The, the deck is as tight as it is. You don't have to take out some other engine and put these guys in there. But yeah. real quick, I uh, you, Andy, do you have any shout outs you want to give out to? Definitely shout out to uh, Cool Stuff Tampa. I mean, thank you for hosting that. It was really amazing. Great opportunity. Kind of just see what uh, what we can do out here in, uh, in Florida. Shout out to my teammates, Jonathan Siordia, Albert Siordia. Those guys are great. They help me train. Uh, pretty much we have a, a TCG Tuesday, so um, we're actually kind of postponing that one to podcast. <laughs> well, sweet. We thank you for that, uh, that sacrifice, man. Right. <laughs> Zach, do you have any shout outs? But before you do, uh, I do want to say that I think next week we'll, we're going to definitely cover Zach's Golbez deck because it is a really interesting take on Golbez. And all the Goldless players are going to want to hear that. So, Zach, do you have any shout-outs? Uh, shout-out to Josh Gardner and uh, Nick Borsari. Uh, I talked to them a lot about my deck uh, in the weeks leading up to the tournament. Uh, I mean, I've been playing Strongest Sword since Opus 1, but uh, I, I'm an off, obviously. But uh, the tweaks that I did to Nicholas's list from Vegas certainly improved the deck, I would say, and um, actually probably won me a few games. Um, so, shout-out to them. Um, the Gilgamesh and Golbez crew. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, though. Um, everyone else knows. Yeah, we appreciate them. <laughs> what about what about you, Angel? Shout out to my teammates because <laughs> uh, I've been getting a lot of practice uh, lately. You know, prior the Petit Cup and now for going to Kansas City. So shout out to them because I've been you know getting good ideas and you know better judgment. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's actually point. kind of frustrating. Uh, because we get paired very often now, just oh, like yeah. round one of every event, and then every round you're get every time you're getting better and better, which is awesome. But it is making my life much harder. <laughs> um, yeah. I I want to shout out uh, to Alfred, um, who made top four. Congrats, buddy! You deserve it. You're awesome. Uh, I'm sorry that you didn't make the finals, but top four is super sick. Uh, definitely shout out to all the the, the players here in Tampa uh, for being super awesome. Um, shout out to Zach. Congrats in your top eight. That's also freaking awesome. Um, and then shout out to my wife uh, for getting ninth place. She worked really, really hard. She tried really, really hard uh, only because she wanted to win the Lightning Plushie. And then shout out to Andy, uh, the winner of the Petit Cup, for being so awesome and giving her the Plushie for absolutely free. That was insane, Andy. Like, that was beyond nice. Uh, and she is very thankful because she loves that Plushie. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. It's my pleasure. Um, before we go, I mean, I would just like to just Alfred's deck name. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's amazing. Uh, I didn't realize that that was what he called it until now. Where I'm looking at how the deck was out there, and I was like, I've been trying not to laugh this whole time, but <laughs> it's amazing. Yep. Yep. Yeah, shout out to Alfred, definitely for sure. All right. Um, anyway, we thank you guys for joining us. Uh, join us next time. We're going to be talking about the, the Strongest Sword deck. Um, and then also we have a really important topic that we're going to be talking about. It's, it's a pretty advanced uh, topic. Uh, basically, it's, it's taken from an article of Magic called PB's Rule. And I promise you that it's going to help you be a better player in Final Fantasy. <laughs> so uh, until then, uh, I'm Sam Riley. Angel Garcia. Zach Burrell. Nico Mona. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for joining us.